Alright gamers, let's prepare for devastating fires, extreme beach erosion, swarms of mosquitoes, and intense competition. Because during these turbulent times, we're going to attempt to develop Cape Bay into the queen of the seaside resorts. But watch out because the town has also brought in the queen of development herself, Ava, our competitor. Hello everyone, welcome to Gaming Solo, I am Rob, your solo gamer friend. And today we're playing Cape May, designed by Eric Mossy and art by Michael Menzel, and most importantly, solo designed by Scott Boggan. And published by Thunderworks Games. So I hope you like land development, beaches, and competitions because it's all waiting for us as you join me in today's playthrough. The board is set up and ready for play. A bomb left board next to the painting of the lighthouse are the activity cards. Activity cards give you special actions throughout the game. To the left of the activity cards are the four upgrade cards. Each upgrade card represents gravel, grass, dirt, and sand. Right above the upgrade cards on the left and at the very top on the right are your cottage and shop tokens and then your Victorian business and landmark miniatures. On the board in the top left corner is your round tracker and you have the lighthouse on the tracker that will keep you track of rounds. On the top center, slightly, uh, slightly to the right of center, you have the player token on the start point. And then to the right, at right, right underneath the green miniatures, are the solo cards, a total of 12 cards in play. Underneath the solo cards is the solo board. The solo board, most of the actions will happen on this board and it will be playing on normal difficulty which is called citizen and the solo will be green. Right below the solo board are the movement cards for the player and right below the movement cards are the player's board. The player's board lets you know the cost to upgrade from a shop to a cottage or to even or from a shop to a business or even a shop or the co cost of place in a cottage upgrading to a Victorian upgrading to a landmark and on the left of the player board are the actions you can take and the, for, and the breakdown for final scoring the miniature here this token is used to track for every turn you take per round but I'm not going to use it because you get three turns per round it should be pretty simple to keep track of that and then finally in the bottom right of the board are your event cards Every, every time you go from one round to the next, you flip an event card over and you have to take those actions before you can continue play. Finally, we have a bag full of bird tokens. Anytime you go bird watching or you have a card that tells you to draw birds, you draw a bird from here and you add it to your stack, they will add to your score at the end of the game. And then finally, the last thing we have to do, we have to draw four bonus cards, review them, and select two to keep and discard the other two bonus cards and you put the rest of the bonus cards back into the box. So I'll deal four bonus cards out. You look at each one. For six points, I have at least two Victorians and or landmarks on both gravel and dirt zone and I can gain an additional two points if I have at least one cottage in each of these zones. That's one option. Next option is for eight points have the most commercial buildings, shops or businesses in the dirt zone plus two points if you also have the most cottages in this zone. The third card is for five points have at least one Victorian or landmark in each of the four zones and for an additional two points if I have at least two Victorians in one of these zones. And the final option is for six points have at least three buildings in the sand zone and at least three buildings in the gravel zone and plus two points additional if you have at least four buildings in each of these zones. So looking at these bonus cards, I think I want to take the one that's worth six points, have at least two Victorians and or landmarks in gravel and dirt, and I want to take the eight point one, have the most commercial buildings in the dirt zone, shops or businesses. And then I'll discard the other two cards and put them all back in the box. And that completes setup for the game. We're ready to begin the first round. The game consists of four seasons, three rounds per season, and three steps per round. The steps are, step one, reveal an event card. That does not happen on the first round. Step two is take actions. There are seven actions you can take, and you're allowed to take the same action multiple times. The actions are, the first one is play a movement card. The second one is build on a location adjacent to you. The third one is upgrade on a location adjacent to you. The fourth one is draw two activity cards and keep one. 
fifth one is playing activity card, the sixth one is retrieve movement cards, and the final one is collect three coin. In a solo play, Ava gets to go first. And which, how you decide how many cards to draw for Ava is you look at the, her player board and you place Ava within the box of her starting season and that's where she will start her spring, summer, fall, and winter season. So if she's sitting in that box and you have to draw cards for Ava, then you draw the if you draw one card and if there's a card symbol in that box, that means you draw two cards. So right now Ava is sitting in the spring box. She has a card symbol, therefore I draw two cards for her. She gets to take both these actions before I get to take mine. And you flip over the first card. In order to know what you have to do for Ava, you gotta understand the anatomy of a card. So in the top left of the card, you see the hammer, which is a build action. Then you look on the card, you find the season symbol that you are in, and you place a shop or a cottage token in that slot. If for some reason that slot is taken up, then you go to the next season and you place something in the slot that's on the card and so forth and go on. So right now on Ava's card, in the spring symbol, in the very top of the corner on Lafayette Street, she gets to place a token and it is a square token which represents a cottage, so you place one cottage down for Ava. Then on the right side of the card, you'll have further instructions. This one says, if summer, do an additional build. So if you were in summertime, you could do an additional build, which means you go for, to the next season on that card to do that. So if it said, if spring, do an additional build, then we look for the summer symbol and build there. If for some reason you have multiple buildings and shops on the board, and you go through all four seasons, and you cannot place a token because all the spots are taken up, then Ava just does not take that action. Further on, down on the right side of the card, you will see the up or down arrow. That means you move Eva on her Ava on her player board down or up one slot in between the two gray zones on the board, green, brown, and tan. And the top one will either be a shop and the bottom one will be Victorian or vice versa depending on the direction it's coming from. And when you move her, you have to take that action on the board. And if you can't take an action in the gravel zone, which Ava's in gravel right now, then you go to grass and if you can't take it in grass, you go forth until you can build her, her shop into a business. Unless there are not any on the board you can take that action with, then of course she loses that turn. So right now, Ava, she drew two cards, she played her first card, she laid a, a cottage out on Lafayette Street, and then she moved down one on her player board to turn a shop into a business. Because she doesn't have any shops on the board, she does not take that action. If Ava had a shop on the board, she took that action, she gets to take a card, the this one of these cards here, out of play, and it has to be matching the area she built in. So if she built in the gravel zone, then she would take the face-up gravel card and take it out of play. She does not take those actions, just points at the end of the game for her. We flip over the second card. This time Ava is going to build on Madison right next to the gazebo and that is another Victorian. So she places the, not Victorian, but the cottage right there. Victorian is the token that you would put out to replace the cottage. And then it says, if spring, do an additional build. So now she gets to put another token out. And so we look for the summer token and it is at the intersection of Columbia and Broadway and it is a shop. So we place one shop token in that location. And then Ava gets to move one more time on her player board. So she moves down and says transition a cottage or switch a cottage to a Victorian in the gravel. She has in the gravel so she will take a Victorian token, remove or t a miniature, remove the cottage token put it back in the pile and now she has a Victorian on the board. And that will end Ava's movement and actions for this round. Now I get to take my turn. In my hand I have cards numbered 1 through 7. And that is my movement value if I play the card. And like I explained earlier, if I play a 1 or a 7 I have to pay 2 coin. If I play a 2 or a 6 I have to pay 1 coin. And right now 
with my objectives to build in the dirt, the gravel, and all that stuff, I want to start building right away. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to play, I want to move to here to throw a shop up. So one, two, three, I want to play a number four. Actually, I don't want to build a shop. I want to build a um, a cottage to turn into a Victorian in the dirt and gravel. So I need to go here. So instead, I'm going to go one, two. I'm going to play the number two. I'm going to pay one coin. You start out with 22 coins. And I did not get my coins, so I'll put them on the table right now. There's my 22. Paying two, one coin to play the number two. And I'll move two spaces. One, two. That was my first action. This card is now burnt. It goes into the discard pile. The next action I'm going to take is to build a shop or a cottage adjacent to me. Now I'm now adjacent to that shop or cottage area right there, which is actually a cottage symbol, the square. So I'm going to look on the board in the gravel area. To build a cottage is going to cost me one dollar. And I do not get to gain any money on my income track for building that in the gravel. But I'm going to build my cottage and put it there. And now I get to, and I have to pay one dollar to build that. So I'll pay one dollar. And now I have another option. I can upgrade that cottage to a Victorian. And I plan on doing that. And to upgrade it to a Victorian, it's going to cost me $3. So I pay my $3. And I upgrade it to a Victorian. Let me grab the right token. I'll give them back theirs. I'm upgraded to a Victorian. And then I look at the monetary value I've earned. And I earned one dollar. So I get to, so my income's up to one dollar. And like I say, you collect income when the seasons change. So at the end of the season, right now I can collect one dollar. And that is the end of my turn. I've taken three of those actions. I've done movement, I've built a cottage or a shop adjacent to me, and I've built a Victorian adjacent to me. And that ends round one. All right, ready to begin round two. We move the lighthouse to the next month. We flip over an event card, and this card is each player pays two dollars for each landmark they own, and if it's winter, they pay three dollars instead. So none of us own landmarks, so that does not affect me at all. Ava flips over a card, and she is going to build on Washington, which will be a cottage right there. She gets to move once, one space, and it's a shop to a business. And so this shop will now become a business. And because she has created business, she gets to take a upgrade card and it was in the grass zone so she gets to take a grass upgrade card and I said the card doesn't matter what's on the card it just points at the end of the game for her and we flip over the next upgrade card and then the symbol on the bottom or in the middle right is a shuffle so we shuffle all the cards back into the deck that has been played have been shuffled. And that ends Ava's turn. Now I get to go. And as I was moving last round, if you noticed, I ended my move on arrows that are on the road. When you play a game, you come across arrows on the road, you have to treat them as one-way streets, which means you have to go the direction of the arrows unless you exit, like in this area here or here. So on Washington, the one way goes all the way until you hit Columbia and Madison. But you can exit right here if you want to. 
you can't exit this way because the arrows are pushing that direction. And you can't exit on just a little quarter square like that. That doesn't count as a space. So you must exit either through here or go all the way to the end. I'm still trying to meet my one of my objectives is to have at least two Victorians in gravel and dirt. I'm in gravel, so I'm going to try to get to another area where I can build another Victorian that's in the gravel area. I'm going to have to work my way around because I'd have to build it here and I'm going to be stuck going this direction or this way, but nothing happened. This is all shops right here. So maybe I'll work my way down to dirt, build in dirt to head back up into the gravel region. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to pay two of my coins for my first action and I'm going to move seven spaces. And that's action one. Now I'm in dirt and also I can build two commercial buildings in dirt for an eight point score. So I'm going to do that. So my next action is I'm going to put down a shop token so it's in dirt so to build a shop in dirt is going to cost me four dollars and I gain five dollars in income so I'll pay for increase my income by five to six and then I drop a shop token right there and I may just go ahead and upgrade to a business. It will cost me $4. So I'm going to pay another $4 and turn that into a business now. And by turning it into a business, I've increased my income by two more. And now my end of season income is up to eight. And that is my third turn, and that ends round two. All right, we're ready to begin round three, but before we progress into round three, I forgot to grab my upgrade card when I converted my shop into a business. So since I converted it in a dirt area, I get a upgrade card from the dirt uh, pile. And this upgrade card is upgrading a cottage to a Victorian costs $1 or less. And it has a continuation symbol at the bottom. On the bottom upgrade cards, you will have five symbols. The first one is for immediate, means you take the action immediately and you discard the card. The second one is ongoing, it is a circle of arrows, and it means you can take that action anytime you, you want to, as long as it applies to the action you're taking and is a free action. You have the one time use, which is a 1x, that means you can take that whenever you want to, but once you take that action, you discard the card. You have the an arrow pointing to a line, that means it's end of game action, which means usually towards scoring. And then you have the ongoing symbol with the one time in the, in the center of it. That means you're allowed to use that card once per round. And that's how the symbology on the card works. And right now the card I drew allows me to use that anytime I take an upgrade action from a cottage to Victorian, it'll always cost me a dollar less. And then we flip over the next card. Now I had an option. I could have either taken two cards from the deck, looked at both and, and kept one, or taken the card that was already up. I chose to take a card that was up because of the fact that I'm saving money that way. The next card, next card we flipped over in the dirt pile is a, is a bonus points of three if you have it into the game. So that now that that's out of the way, we move to the next round. So we're on our third month of the spring season. We flip over an event card. And the event card is Cottage Association Formed. The player with the most cottages in the gravel zone collects $1 per cottage. The player with the most cottages in the grass zone collects $1 per cottage. So right now, I don't have any cottages anywhere. And since Ava does not collect money, the effect does not uh, apply to her. So we just continue on then. All right. Grab another solo card for Ava. And her build action is she is going to build over here on Lafayette and Jackson. And it looks like she's putting up a business. So she'll put a business token out. 
Her special action is if it's fall, so that does not happen, her additional action, and she moves once on the track, and she upgrades a cottage to a Victorian. And so I will upgrade since right here, since she's in the gravel, we start with the gravel first. She has a cottage in the gravel, so now she has a Victorian. And that ends Ava's turn. I get to go. I still need to build another commercial building somewhere in the dirt. So I'm going to move three spaces. So I'm going to move my play my number three card. I'll move three spaces. One, two, three. That's action one. Action two is I'm going to go ahead and purchase a shop. And the shops in the grass zone cost $4. So I'll spend my five token and that gives me a cottage or a shop that I get from the correct pile. And then by putting a shop in the grass zone, I increase my income by another five. So I go from eight to 13. And now I have the option, I have one more action left. I can increase my shop in the grass, I mean in the dirt zone to a business for another four. I only have three coins, so I'm going to take another action, and that is collect income for my final action. I get to collect three coins, and that's my final action there. And so I'm up to six. I can't take any further actions, but uh, when I start next round, I do get to collect income, but also I'll have six on an income. I can convert that shop into a business, and I can go back to working on getting Victorians in gravel and dirt. So I can work on getting Victorians in here and then go back and, and uh, work up in the gravel zone. And that ends round three. All right, we're gonna cross over into round four, summer season, the first round of the summer season. We're going to move Ava to her summer slot at the bottom and she still draws two cards because she's sitting there. And we will take two of these activity cards. And the activity cards that I have are upgrade any cottage to a Victorian or any Victorian for a landmark for $2 or less. Or I can use it to move to the start space. And the other activity card is build or upgrade two times either a shop or a cottage any buildings diagonally adjacent to your current space. So diagonally adjacent means if my character was here, that means she is diagonally adjacent to these buildings here, which means pretty much at a diagonal from where she's sitting at. But you still have to be able to move to, if you can move her to one of those spaces, it doesn't matter if the arrows, but if, if you moved her to one of those spaces, she'd be adjacent to it, so that's diagonally adjacent. So those will come in handy. I'll put them right here in the corner. But uh, yeah, upgrading for $2 less is good. Collect our income. I'm down up to 13. So there's our income. And draw an event card. And it's East Side Fire. So place fire tokens on the border as shown. All build and upgrade actions in this region will cost an additional $2. So it looks like the fire is going to happen. Use the fire tokens. These fire tokens are the uh, angle shaped ones, right, left angle, whatever you want to call them. And it looks like they're incorporating this portion. So going from Madison Cutting across over to Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh down to Beach, and Beach back to Madison, and everything in between there costs an additional $2 for this round. And yeah, we'll go. Ava gets two cards. First one is she's going to build. Down here in this spot right there, she'll be putting a cottage out in the sand. And she gets to collect a bird token. So she doesn't collect a token. So when Ava collects birds, she moves up on this bird track. So right now she has one bird worth one point. And the further she goes, the points increase 
con um, considerably. So it goes from 1 to 3, 6, 10, 14, and so on. So the more birds she gets, the more chances she's going to run ahead of me in this game. Her next build action is she's going to build on the intersection of Lafayette and Broadway. And it looks like she's putting a cottage out. And she gets to move on her track. So that means she gets to uh, sh turn a shop into a business. And this is the only shop she has out right here. So this becomes a business for her. And that ends Ava's turn. I get to go. I still have two, um, two Victorians in sand and, or gravel and dirt. Or and have the most commercial buildings, shop or business in the dirt. So I have one commercial building, but it's tied. So actually, I have two if I count that one. So I'm going to upgrade before I do anything. I'm going to upgrade my shop to a business. It's in the dirt, so it's going to cost four coin. And I'm going to upgrade this now. That was my first action. Second action, I said I need Victorians in the dirt. So I'm going to, let's see if I do this. One, two, three, four. I got a one, a four, a five, and a six remaining. If I go to four, put me here. You know, I'm going to pay two coin. I'm going to move one. There's my two coin. That was my second action. Third action is I'm going to build a cottage in the dirt, and that will cost three dollars. Grab these. Put my cottage out. And that will increase my income by two. And I forgot to do my income for my business. And that will increase my income by an additional two. So I'm up to 17 on the income track. And that is all three of my actions. And that is the end of round four. All right, ready to begin round five. We move up one a marker, flip over an event card. And it is Mount Vernon Hotel destroyed by fire. First of all, we take these out of the way since that's the end of the la that last round. And the Mount Vernon Hotel has been destroyed by fire. Each pair... Each player collects one dollar for each cottage they own. So we get a dollar for each cottage we own. Ava excluded, so I get I have one cottage, so I get one dollar. Puts them back up to eleven. And now Ava gets to go. She gets to draw one card. And she is going to build down here in the sand. She's gonna put out a cottage. She has a bird, so she goes up on the bird track. She's up to three points now. And we shuffle the cards back into the deck. Okay, I think they're decently shuffled. Then my turn, so I have three cards remaining in my hand. I have a four, a five, and a six. But first, I'm going to pay to upgrade that cottage to a Victorian in the dirt. So it's going to cost me five dollars, and I'll go up one dollar on the track. So we turn this into a Victorian. I will pay my three dollar or five dollars. And increase one on track, puts me to 18. And there's my five. That's my first action. Next action is to move. That's I have a four, five, and a six. So see, 
If I go one, two, three, four, five, six, that'll be building in sand. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll go five. I'm gonna build another Victorian over here. So, so I'm gonna put a Victorian. I mean, a cottage there, and that cottage is gonna cost me four dollars. So here's another four. And that is, keep grabbing for the wrong side. That is all three of my actions. And that ends round four. Or round five, I mean. All right, let's start round six. Go on to the third season of the summer month. Flip over another event card. And it is, first train arrives in Cape May. Upgraded cottage. Upgrading a cottage to a Victorian costs $2 less this round. That's great for me because I have almost no money. So Ava goes. She's going to draw a card. And she is going to place. So she already has a cottage there. So we go to autumn. And she has a shop there. So then we go to winter. And there's already building winter, so then we go to back to spring, and she will place a shop right here. That's lots of paper. There we go. And she moves up on the bird track, and we shuffle this card back into the deck. Alright, that should be shuffled in decently enough. Now it's my turn. I have two cards remaining. But I'm going to take advantage of upgrading for $2 less. So I'm going to turn that. I'm going to make sure I have enough first. So turning a cottage to a Victorian in the dirt costs five. It actually cost me three, but I'm short one coin. So my first action is to take three coin. My second action is to spin. The three coin to upgrade this to a Victorian and I think my third and final action is I'm going to reclaim all my cards I think that'll work for me retrieve movement cards I collected yep we're good to go that ends round six season three of the summer month Alright, before we go to the next season, which is a fall season, there's three things I forgot to do. I'm sure a couple of y'all caught it and it's hauling at the screen trying to remind me. So first of all, I forgot to reduce the cost of my Victorians by one because of my upgrade card. So I received two coins back to me. I forgot to give Ava her upgrade card for putting a shop there. So now she has two upgrade cards. And I forgive myself my upgrade card for putting a shop here. And I want to take this because it's in the sand. I mean, in the dirt, I'm going to grab the 3.1 to give me three additional points at the end of the game because I need as many points as I can to try to beat Ava because I have not beat her once yet. And I'll flip over another one. Now the board is right. We cross over into the new season. And so first thing we do is I take two of my activity cards, and it's a... Upgrade any cottage to a Victorian or any Victorian to a landmark, or I can move to the intersection of Columbia and Broadway. And the other one is upgrade any Victorian to a landmark for two dollars less. Both of those are for two dollars less. The other card was too. Or I can move any space adjacent to a church. There are two churches on the board. And so when you look closely, there's a church here, and there's a church here. It looks more like a cathedral right there. Those are the two churches they're talking about. So that <clears throat> happens. So now we collect our income, 19. I'll just take 20 and return one back. And we move Ava to the new season. She does not get any additional cards from this point on. Just because I'm playing with her on Citizen Track. If I was playing a harder track, she'd be getting a lot more. And I think we're good to go. Flip over the event card. And it is Mosquito Swarms Dampen Tourism. Each player pays a dollar for each two for every two buildings they own round up. 
if it is fall or winter, which is fall, each player collects a dollar for every two buildings they own round down. So I get to collect a dollar for every two buildings I own round down. I own five buildings, so I get two dollars. Well, actually, five, six, nope, five buildings. I don't have anything else. Yep. So I get two dollars. And now it's Ava's turn. And Ava is going to build, looks like right here along Lafayette, she's going to put out a cottage. And she collects another bird, she's up to 10 points on birds now. My turn. I'm going to, let's see, I have two Victorians in dirt. I need to get back up to gravel and build another Victorian. So. I need to move as far as I can, so I'll probably end up paying, since I got those two free coins, I think I'll go ahead and pay the two coins back and move up to seven spaces. Puts me close, but not enough in the gravel. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Move my seven spaces, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then I'm going to pay, let's see, I need to go, so one, two, five, so nope, so I have to go, one, two, three, four, five, six, I'll do the six and I'll land on a bird token, so I'll pay one for moving six, that's my second action, so, one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm on a bird, so I collect a bird token. There are three symbols on the board. There's birds, pier, and lighthouse. And if you land on the bird symbol, you get to dig in the bag and collect a bird token, which I'm about to do right now. And if you land on the pier, just keep two and discard one. If you land on the lighthouse, you can build a cottage in, or shop anywhere on the board for five dollars and that's what those symbols mean because I landed on the bird I'm going to reach in the bag and randomly collect a bird token how bird tokens work is I collected I don't even know what that bird is I'm going to try to tell you bird tokens work is you have to have unique pairs or unique birds so what you do is for every different bird you have you put them on the same row and for and you can collect up to seven different birds. And once you collect seven, each one is worth points. So one bird is one point, two is two, three is five, all the way up to 21 points. Now if you have two of the same birds, then you start a new row with that second bird, and you collect points for that also. And I'll explain how that works at the end of the game if I get to that point. So that was my second action. I get a third action. And I'm going to, let's see, how many spaces do I need to move? One, two, I need to move three spaces. Yeah, I'm going to move, I, have to, I can only move two, I can only move one. Oh, here it is, three, I do have a three, okay, I thought. I'm going to move three spaces. One, two, three, and that will end my turn. And hopefully Ava doesn't build on that lot right there, otherwise I'll have to move again. And that is the end of round seven. Okay, we're ready to start. Round eight, second season of the fall month. Let's go ahead and flip over the event card. It is landmark homes recognized by Congress. Upgrade, Vic, upgrade in Victorian to a landmark costs two dollars less this round. That's good. I think I might be doing that. So it costs two dollars less to upgrade these. So let me go ahead and take care of Ava first, and we we'll see what I can do between my activity cards. So Ava is going to build down here. She can put another shop down here. Give her a shop. And since it's fall, she's doing an additional build. So we'll go to what winter is. And she can't put anything here because I own a house there. So then she'll go to spring. And nothing goes there. Then she goes to summer and she puts a house right there. And then she moves on the track, so she moves down, so she gets to turn, she'll turn a cottage to a Victorian. 
and she will do it in the dirt area first she doesn't have any so it's all going to be up here so in the gravel so actually nope yeah right here so I should turn this into a Victorian and Avis turns over so let me see what my upgrade cards let me do um, and my activity cards I can upgrade any cottage to a Victorian or any Victorian to a landmark for two dollars less so with the two dollar reduction this year it'll only cost it'll be four dollars off so if I want to and it says any so I don't have to be next to it because otherwise it's say adjacent so I think I'm going to go ahead and play this card gonna, I think I'm going to put it the landmark down here it's going to cost two dollars less or four dollars less total so I put it in the dirt and landmarks and dirt cost ten dollars so I actually paid six dollars not bad that was my first action my second action is to see upgrade any Victorian to a landmark for two dollars less again I'm going to play that one And I want to do the same right here. Make this a landmark. So it's going to cost me another six dollars. So these activity cards came in handy. So that's another six dollars spent. I have ten dollars left. What are these remainings? I can upgrade any cottage to a Victorian or any Victorian to a landmark for two dollars less. I'm thinking we'll do that one last time. So I'm going to upgrade another Victorian to a landmark for two dollars less. And the reason why I'm doing this is because these landmarks are worth a lot more points at the end of the game. So I have three landmarks. I'll spin that, and we do scoring. Vic landmarks don't count as Victorian, so they'd be separate points. And I get four coin back to me. So I've taken all three of my actions, and that ends my turn and that's the end of round eight all right we're going to start round nine third season of the fall flip over the event card and it is beach erosion hampers development all build upgrade actions in the sand zone cost one dollar more this round if it's winter they will cost two dollars more so it's not winter but they still cost a little more so Building down here is going to be an additional dollar. So Ava gets to go. See what she's got going on here. She is going to build a cottage right there. And she doesn't get into action because it's not winter. But she gets to move on the track. And she turns a Victorian into a landmark. Starting with the sand. Not the sand. The dirt. She does not have any Victorians in the dirt none in the sand so we go up to the gravel and she earned herself a landmark I have four cards I have one two four and five remaining but I'm going to build first and I'm going to put a cottage on the gravel for one dollar cottage here and then I'm going to upgrade it for three dollars but actually it's going to cost me two dollars because of my one dollar discount from my upgrade card turn that into a Victorian and I go at one dollar on the track brings me 20 so that was two actions my third action it's going to be, might as well move. Or I can use this card. Let's see, do I have to be diagonally, any building diagonally adjacent? So, can't do anything with that card yet. So, 
my activity card will stay as is, and I'm going to I'm getting money next round. Let's see. I want to move three spaces. I can't move three spaces. Two, three, three to the bird. Also, I'm trying to get another bird. I'm looking at the board to see what I can do. I think I'm just going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to move two. Now I'm going to spin the coin. I'm going to move four spaces. And I'm going to move one, two, three, four right here so I get another build action next round. So right now I achieved the main objective for two Victorians or landmarks in gravel and dirt. But I need to get a cottage in each one of those to get the additional plus two bonus points. In the dirt, I have the most commercial buildings now, but I need to get some cottages in that zone because whoever has the most cottages in that gets an additional two points, or if I do, I get the additional two points. So we'll stop right there. It's the end of my round. Talk myself through what I plan to do, so we'll see. All right, we're going to start a new season. We're going to start the Winter season, so we cross over, collect income. I get to collect a total of 20. Let's grab the two tens for now. Grab two activity cards, and the activity cards are upgrade any cottage to a Victorian or a Victorian to a landmark for two dollars less again, or I can move to the lighthouse space. Remember, the lighthouse gives you a five, you can build anywhere for five dollars. And the other card, for $2 less, I can upgrade any cottage to a Victorian or build a shop or business on any empty lot along Broadway, which is this area here, which is only two shops left. So I plan on using those cards to help get those upgrades going. So we'll flip over an event. Central Fire. Place fire tokens on the board as shown. All buildings and upgrades in actions in that area will cost an additional two dollars for this round. So it looks like the fire is starts here, Lafayette, encompassing this area here, travels all the way down Ocean and Madison until it reaches Beach and encompasses this area here. So that's the fire zone right there, the recovery zone. All right, I think we're straight. Ava gets her turn. Oh, we move Ava here. Now she gets her turn. And she is going to build where in winter. She was supposed to build here. She can't build there, so we go to spring. She already has a build in spring, so we go to summer. There's a build in summer, and we go to fall, and there's something in fall. So she does not get to build, but she does collect another bird token. Puts her 14 points on the bird track, and we shuffle the cards back into the deck. Give me a second here to shuffle these up. I like the Automa that they put together. It's a... Uh, very well thought of. I like the fact that there's a decent amount of cards and the cards just shuffled back in. So you don't have to wait till the deck to run out. So it kind of creates that randomness that you need. So I really enjoy that. So kudos to the developing team on that. Alright, so I get my turn. I have three cards remaining. I think I'm going to drop a cottage right there. And so the cottage and the gravel is going to cost me a dollar. I'm going to leave that there. Let me see. And then I'm going to move. Like I said I have the action says if I have to have a cottage in there, I get the additional points. I get a cottage down here in this dirt also. Let's see, I can upgrade any cottage or any cottage of Victorian, cottage of Victorian, or build or upgrade diagonally adjacent. I gotta do some movement. So I'm going to move, let's see, I have a one, a two, and a five. 
can't go that way because the arrows are going that way. So I have to go, if I go this way to be, you know I'm going to do a one. It cost me two dollars. And I'm going to move on to this bird here and collect a bird token. And it's a different bird, so that gives me two points on the bird track. And I still got one more action. See, I've built, I've moved. I think I'm going to draw two activity cards and keep one. I can build on any empty lot. That's exactly what I need. Both these are awesome. So, I'm going to keep the one built on any lot, or I can move the number of spaces equal to the amount of bird tokens I have. But uh, I want to take this one because I plan on building next round then. And that will end round 10, uh, first month of the winter season. Alright, let's begin. Round 11, second season of the winter months. So we'll flip over the event card, and it is War Hero Build Chalafont Hotel. In turn order, players are on at least one building adjacent to an empty commercial lot may immediately pay to build a shop in one of those lots without spending an action. So, Ava doesn't have to pay. She still gets that action. So. If she owns a building next to a commercial lot, so that means Ava can go here. So she's going to put a shop there. And now I get to do one. And I get to put one here. That's the only place I have. I thought I was about to miss out on that opportunity. And that will cost me... Let's see, shop in the gravel. It's $3. And I have $15 remaining. And by putting the shop in the gravel, I go up on, go up $3 on the track. Doesn't really mean much now at this point, but it is what it is. So flip over a card for Ava, and she is going to build, looks like next to the church, she's going to build right here. And she collects another bird token, so she's up to 18 points on the birds. So my turn, let's see here, I'm going to use some of my action cards. I'm looking at what I got here. So those are diagonal, diagonal on any empty lot. So I can build a shop or a cottage on any empty lot. So I'm going to build, let me see here. I'm put a cottage right here in this sand and that will cost me or in the dirt I mean I keep calling it sand that will cost me three no four dollars I have eleven remaining and I go up on the income track another five dollars Let's see here. I think uh, got two more actions remaining. I don't want to upgrade because I need to have a, sh a cottage there. But I can diagonally adjacent. Nothing's diagonally adjacent to me. Upgrade any cottage to a Victorian. I need that cottage right where it is. Any Victorian to a landmark. I'm going to do a Victorian to a landmark for two dollars less. And so I'm going to upgrade this Victorian to a landmark. And it's going to cost me 
eight dollars. So I'm going to burn this card, pay my eight dollars. to put this out and that was my second action my third action is I think I'm going to collect my cards so I can do some movement so I'm going to collect my cards my third action I don't know if that was a good idea or not since the next round is the last round but we'll see and that will end round 11 all right, we're about to start the final round, which is the third month of the winter season. Flip over the event card. It is House of Emblem's uh, Physics Ghost Frights Birds. Do not draw bird tokens after moving to a bird space this round. That kind of hurts, so I plan on collecting some birds to try to catch up on the bird track. So, I have to change my strategy up a bit. So, we'll go ahead and let Ava get her card first. And she is going to put a... She was supposed to put a home there, but she can't. So then we go to spring, and she will put a home. She can't put one there because she already has one. Then we go to summer, and she builds a shop down here. She moves on the track, and it is a cottage to a Victorian. So she doesn't have any in the sand, so we'll go over to, does she have any cottages? She has right here, becomes a Victorian. No, that's mine. This one right here becomes a Victorian. And she shuffles this back into the deck, but it doesn't matter because that's the last time she will play, so I'll just drop them right there. Now I get my opportunity. Like I said, I was going to try to collect some birds, but that goes out the window, so what can I do? I can try to build a shop. Well, if I build a shop to a business in the sand, or in the dirt, I mean, then I can collect two bird tokens from the upgrade cards, but i got to get there. And to get there, it's going to cost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. I had to spend, I already have the money for it, so that goes out the window. So the best I can do is just try to... Let's see if I get an upgrade card in the gravel. It costs, let's see, the shop to build a shop in the gravel is $2. And a business additional two. Movement, yeah, I can't do that either. Spent too much money. So I think I'm just going to... What throw, i got to throw something down for points. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm going to... Well, I can't because I had to pay for it. So either way, I'm kind of stuck. Let's see. What are my upgrade cards? Let me do. I'm going to read these one more time. Any cottage to a Victorian or build on any empty lot on Broadway. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do that right there. I'm going to build on an empty lot on Broadway. If I throw out the shop, it'll be for it. Still don't have the money for it. So I'd have to collect first. They'll play it. These are diagonally adjacent. I, I can build twice, but it has to be diagonally adjacent. And that's not going to work. Well, yeah, that card, that card hurt me. Because I, I had plans to move to, from bird token to bird token. We'll go ahead and move three spaces. One, two, three. I'm going to build a shop in the gravel for two dollars. I go up one on the income track. So my second action is building the shop in the gravel. And my third one is. Let's see here. My third action. I 
I'm just going to collect, I'm going to collect coin just because I'm probably missing something, but I'll end the round right there, and that's the end of the round. I'll be back in a moment with uh, scoring. All right, we're going to start scoring. I'm going to use the player tokens to track the points, Ava and mine. And we'll start in the gravel area first. The most victorious in the gravel area belongs to Ava. She has three. I only have zero, so she gets one point. The most landmarks goes to me, two to her one. I get five points for that. Most buildings in the area, Ava has one, two, three, four, five. And I have one, two, three, four, five. So in an event of tie, we split. And luckily, because I put that building down at the last play, that gave us the tie. And that might be the difference between winning and losing for me. So I'll go up four points to nine. She goes up four points to five. Because Ava has a whole lot of bird points coming her way. Next, we'll go to the grass area. See, for the grass areas, the most there are not any Victorians, are not any landmarks. So, the rest of the most buildings which belongs to Ava. So, she gets six points, brings her to 11. Then we'll go to the dirt area. Victorians are none. Landmarks, I have two, so I get nine points. So, it brings me to 18. And then the most buildings, I have the most buildings, gives me four more points. So it gets me to 22. And then we go to sand. The only thing we have is buildings. Ava gets two points out of the most buildings in the sand. So it brings her to 13. She has two upgrade cards. Gives her six points, three points per card. Brings her to 19. I get one upgrade card that has three points on it. So it takes me to 25 bird tokens. I have two bird tokens for a total of two points. Brings you 27. Ava has 18 points worth of bird tokens, so it brings her to 37. Let's see. Oh yeah, I almost forgot about my uh, objectives. So I get six points if I have at least two Victorians in sand and two in landmark with two cottages for an additional two points. I have two sand, two there, so I get eight points for that total. So that brings me up to 35. Still behind her, but I got this also, which I finally beat Ava after about four or five games because I get eight points for having commercial, for having the most, well maybe not, most commercial buildings in the dirt zone. Let's see what we got here. I have two. Ava. Yep, she doesn't have any. So I have the most in the dirt zone. So I get eight points. Plus if I have a cottage in the dirt zone. I do. So I get ten points. So it brings me to 45. To Ava's 37. So I beat Ava for the first time. And ever playing this game. I think I played four or five times. So... Final score is I have 45 and Ava has 37. I beat her by um, 8 points. The difference is that tie right there. If I would have not tied with her, I'd be down 4 points. And she'd be up 4 points. And we'd actually be tied. And the tiebreaker goes to, I think, whoever has the most coin left over. But it doesn't count because Ava. So I probably would have been bird tokens. Who knows? So bottom line front is, I finally beat Ava only because I had that one opportunity to drop that there. If I had dropped that there, Ava probably would have won. So it's a great game, and uh, I'll be back in a moment. We'll go over some final thoughts. So Kate May, this is definitely one of my favorite games. Um, easy to play, very well thought out. The kudos to Scott Bogan for coming up with an automa that is very well balanced, easy to understand, and enjoyable. I felt that the Automa does not run away with the game. Even when you put it on the most difficult challenge, I still think as long as you understand your role and your objectives, you have a chance to actually beat the Automa, but it will be challenging. So, kudos to the whole team for putting this game together, but Scott Bogan, definitely one of the best Automas I've seen in a game in a long time. So, keep it up. I'm looking forward to playing more games that you design for Solo Mode 4. 
Um, the artwork is great. The board is laid out. Like I said, Cape May is an actual historical town in New Jersey, one of the first settlements since. It's so it has a lot of history in there. When you look on the event cards, you not just get the event, but if you look at the bottom, you get a, a little bit of history of about that event written onto the card. So if you're into history, especially when it comes to American history or just uh, history of just when towns were forming and, and newspaper articles are clipped and put in there, you know, Kate May has it all, so I really like it. I enjoyed the fact that um, it was a mix of tokens, miniatures, you're moving around the board. I felt like it, you were actually into it and you were trying to develop that town. Like I said, and you were working with Ava to help develop the town, but at the same time you're still trying to outscore her to have the best part of the town. So, great job. Love the game. It's definitely going to hit my table a few more times, and I really enjoyed playing it. Like I said, I intend to play it again on a lot harder level. Probably get beat again, but like I said, once you understand the, your objective, um, and you focus on your objectives and not worry about what Ava's doing, then you have a chance of winning the game. But you're not going to run away with it, and she's not going to run away with it. Very well balanced. Love the solo mode. So I'm highly going to recommend this to anyone who wants to get into, into solo gaming, or even if you're new to solo gaming, this is definitely one of those games that I would get people into. As always, thank you for joining me here at Gaming Solo. It is truly appreciated. If you like the playthroughs that Gaming Solo is producing, then I would greatly be appreciated if you give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down in the bottom right corner. Also, when you get the opportunity, visit the Facebook page, Solo Board Gamers. You can find the link in the description below. A great group of people, like I said, continue to plug them. I get a lot of my ideas through them when it comes to gaming. If I made any mistakes in this playthrough, please let me know in the comments below. Feedback is always appreciated. This is Gaming Solo, and have a great day.